and thank you for inviting me today to be part of this uh, show event. Uh, I'll be speaking. I'm Mrs. Pratima Sinha, CEO of DSR Educational Society Hyderabad, and we have Villa Open Minds International School as well as four preschools under us. Um, today I'll be speaking about aesthetic literacy, which uh, I feel is really very important in today's life. Uh, children need to be exposed uh, to a lot of appreciation and a lot of beauty that is around them. They need to understand uh, how to create that culture of appreciation around them. So I'll take you through it and uh, hopefully um, you in your own organization will be able to take it over. I'd written an article recently on the same, which had come out on Education World, and it was highly appreciated. So I thought, let me share my thoughts on the same topic uh, in this forum. So with that, are you able to see my second slide? Yeah. So uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, I'm sure you must have all heard. It talks about the physiological safety, belonging and love, esteem, cognitive and aesthetic also. Aesthetics in that hierarchy of need of Maslow's come just below self-actualization. Now, why has he put the aesthetic just below self-actualization? Because he feels that all our five senses need to be highlighted, need to be exposed, and only then we will be able to appreciate what is good around us, what is beautiful around us, what needs to be taken care of. And then once we know how we need to take care of uh, things around us, how we can appreciate the beauty of things around us, then we reach to self-actualization. Then I reach to a level where I know that I'm confident, I'm positive, I know my potential, and I create that positive vibes around me. So that is where, uh, you know, he has been very, very clear about how we need to bring in aesthetics into the life of an individual. It is all about appreciation of beauty. Now, beauty doesn't just mean a beauty of things. It also, uh, it's also about perceiving their beauty in life. It's also appreciating people. It's also appreciating just a piece of wood. How will you create that into something beautiful? What things that you, you see around you, how can you make them beautiful? How can you create something out of it? How can you innovate, innovate something out of it? How can you appreciate that and take it into your own self? So that is what then leads to self-actualization. The, the person becomes self-confident and very, very sure of themselves and very positive. So that is where I feel that, you know, uh, I've, I've actually have taken the base of Maslow's hierarchy of needs for aesthetic literacy. It provides, actually, aesthetic literacy provides a forum for historical, critical, educational, psychological, and conceptual research. And learning goes beyond the objective of logical knowledge. Every day in the classroom, teachers are just giving the knowledge per se, but are they, are they giving that exposure to the child to appreciate the things that are around them? So that is nothing but, but aesthetic literacy. In fact, in New York, uh, the New York Museum of Modern Art, and the New York public schooling system, they did a very bold research and they, were, they studied the students. They understood the different levels of aesthetic appreciation in the students. And they came up with a beautiful curriculum, uh, which 
actually has highlighted in the research, if you read about it, it has actually highlighted the understanding of the student and the love for uh, studying and being in the class and acquiring more knowledge because the creativity, the innovation are really highlighted. I'll go to my next slide. I, I would also like to add on that, you know, when you are walking, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the street and you find that one of the shops, shop window has got a beautiful display, aren't you attracted towards it, right? So that is how, how you display, how you showcase the beauty is also part of aesthetic literacy. I may have 101 things at home which are beautiful, but I, if I don't display them properly, if I don't display them in an aesthetic way, then they are not appreciated, right? So these are small, small things uh, which we want our children to start appreciating, start understanding, becoming aware of it right from the childhood. That is why I, I said five senses. See, even in the preschool, even at preschool level, when we think of activities for preschool students, we think of activities which are related to all the five senses. They are related to visual, they're related to auditory, they're related to uh, the feelings, they're related to the taste. So all the senses are part of all the activities that are created in the curriculum for preschool also, because that's the foundation. Now, why is it done that? Why do we do that? This is because of the five senses have to be totally in sync and they have to be listening. If we do not use one sense, if we do not use something, then it goes redundant, right? So I'll go to my next slide. Yeah. So teaching concepts of aesthetic education, uh, there is artistic teaching that can take place, a totally artistic teaching uh, where art and culture and uh, performing art and visual arts are highlighted throughout the curriculum. We talk about life-based teaching. I told you uh, that it's not just about things, it's also appreciating the life. Uh, it's also appreciating the small nuances of, okay, today, you know, uh, my, my friend called me up to find out how am I. So that is appreciable. That is aesthetic, right? If I call up someone or I, I call up my mom to ask her, how is she feeling? That is life-based teaching. So these come under the different aesthetic education actually comes under these teaching concepts. And I am sure that all the teachers are doing it. I'm sure all the schools are doing it, but there is, we have to find the uh, very strong base for talking about it and saying that, yes, in my school, aesthetic literacy is happening. Diversified teaching. I need not be just in front of the chalkboard or in front of the students, how I diversify, diversify my teaching. I can take them outside, make them aware of the beautiful tree that is there in the school garden, the leaves that are growing, the leaves changing color. So appreciating the beauty of nature is also part of it. I can take them to maybe a museum where uh, you know they, they understand and they, they, are, they become aware of different types of forms of of art that can be appreciated. I know a lot of children don't like to go to museums because they say it's boring, but then historical, historical is so very important in appreciation in aesthetic literacy. So taking them to museum, taking them for discussion, taking them on a, a city, uh, you know, old, old cities, every city has got an old city, you know, historical areas, taking them there, taking them to the forts and making them appreciate uh, what is the beauty of the things that are seen around them. That is diversified teaching. 
teaching through experience. As I said, taking them out, making them feel things. You know, in IB schools, generally, all the natural things are brought to the class. Uh, in, in the classroom, you will see marbles, you will see leaves, you will see twigs, you will see buttons, you will see all the general wool and things like that. And out of that, children are learning. So teaching through touch, visual, auditory, thinking, how to make something different from this. Uh, as I said, the, a twig itself can become a, um, for a teacher an asset, a tool to teach in the classroom. Teaching by doing, this is what I'm saying. You give them a lot of things, let them appreciate those things, let them come out with, with something new, something beautiful, something different. That is teaching by doing, they'll understand. Uh, the other day we had uh, in our school, we had, um, we had celebrated the birthday of uh, Monet. And Monet is, uh, was actually blind, not totally blind, but slightly blind. And his paintings are beautiful, but they are not clear because he couldn't see clearly that his paintings are also blurred. But he used to draw all the nature, the flowers, the, the, the river, the lotuses and the daffodils and all sorts of things. So we created that environment in our school for Monet's birthday that actually falls on 14th November. And we had our children doing all the activities which could connect them to nature. And appreciation of nature, you see all the colors that we are wearing uh, today are coming from there, from where? The flowers, the combination of colors that we wear. If I'm wearing an orange and a green, you will find an orange and green in the flowers and the trees. If I'm wearing a yellow and a blue, you will find that combination in the butterflies, in the flowers. So, so beauty of nature is also part of aesthetic literacy. So teaching by doing, let them do a lot of things. Individual teaching, if, if the child is interested in only art or performing art or drawing or coloring or, or maybe dance and music or theater, so give them that experience of individual performances. So individual teaching, imaginative teaching. Give them the experiences to imagine. What if, what if, what if, what will happen in case the flower becomes, or, you know, um, now we tell our teachers that if the child is not colored the leaf green, Please do not mark it wrong because the child perceives the color as maybe red or yellow. So we have to give, a, uh, we have to give it correct. Those days are gone when we use teachers used to put a big cross for leaf not being green in color. Maybe the sunlight is falling on that leaf which the child is seeing and that's why he says it's yellow in color. So imagination, uh, give them books to read appreciate the, the literature, uh, ask them to imagine what could be next, or just give them some key words and ask them to imagine and write a story. So literature is also very much part of aesthetic literacy, appreciation of literature, appreciation of art, appreciation of music, appreciation of, of, uh, of life, individual, everything comes under aesthetic ed education perceptual, perceptions. What is perception? How I perceive things, how I perceive others, how I see, how I'm able to understand what is there in front of me. So that has to be highlighted in the teaching, in the teaching part. So these are the teaching concepts of aesthetic education. We talk about visual beauty. We talk about auditory enchantment. We talk about the wow factor. We talk about the astounding creativity. We talk about the positive vibrations in the brain. We talk about the stimulating innovation. And we talk about analyzing and synthesizing. So all these create that excitement and the electricity 
in the student to appreciate what is around them. I'll be going to my next slide. So as I said, aesthetic literacy is a powerful, powerful tool. And arts is what we need to follow uh, along with our curriculum. So when I was speaking about uh, the New York Academy of Arts and uh, uh, the New York public school system, so, so they actually uh, created a curriculum that would lead the children towards awareness of aesthetic literacy and move them away from the objective of just the subject knowledge. And it was totally integrated, the curriculum was totally integrated with arts. And today also NEP talks about integration of art. I've uh, seen a lot of uh, sessions by CBSC uh, based on art integration. So why not? So now is the time that when you decide on the curriculum for the next academic year, sit down with your art teacher, sit down with your music teacher, sit down with your theater teacher, sit down with your uh, sports teacher and dance teacher and, and come up with a beautiful curriculum where you highlight and uh, make the children and the, highlight the curriculum in such a way that children start appreciating the aesthetics of things and aesthetics, aesthetics of life. So uh, uh, this is a picture you can see very clearly. It's how you integrate theater, dance, visual arts, and music. It talks about the creativity, as I told you earlier, because it is one of the skills, the three, the three Cs people are talking about today. Creativity is one of them. Communication is one of them, right? So they all come under when we take in aesthetic literacy and adapt that for our students. So creativity, uh, everybody is talking about creativity. Teachers talk about creativity and tell students, oh, be creative in your writing. Be creative in your art. Be creative in what you're uh, doing, music or uh, theater. But are we giving that exposure to the children to be creative? That is what we need to think about. We have to expose the children to a lot of things so that they start appreciating beauty, start appreciating what is around them, and start being creative. For creativity comes only when you arouse the curiosity of the child. Only when the child asks 101 questions, only when the child feels something, only when the child uh, is able to perform something, uh, he has done something, will he be able to create and innovate something new, something different. When we talk about choices, so give the students choices. Okay, you want to do, as I said in the previous slide, individual teaching. So give the student choices to, uh, to maybe uh, choices to uh, find out whether he wants to go into music or whether he wants to go into theater or whether he wants to go into art or whether he wants to go into uh, literacy or literature. So once the choices are given to the students, they know where their forte is and they will be uh, you know, highly successful in that area. But if you push them into something which they don't want, if, they, if you push them into something which they have, uh, they're not interested, then there will be absolutely no learning happening uh, for the child. So choices have to be given. We talk about, as I told you earlier, historical and cultural. For historical and cultural appreciation, lit aesthetic literacy is very important. We have, India is not only India, every country has got its own culture. Every country has got its own traditions. Every country has got its own languages. How do we appreciate ourselves and others, right? So we need to be aware, our students need to be aware 
of the civilizations that are there, the cultures that are there across the world, the languages that are spoken, the beauty of the languages that are spoken, the traditions that are there across the world. And they should be made to appreciate everything. What is there, what we feel is good for us, maybe for another country that also would be good, their own traditions. So this is how we create that culture of aesthetic literacy right from the beginning, giving the students that kind of exposure and communication. When the child is performing on the stage, uh, you know, uh, his body language, his facial expressions, his language skills, his literature skills are all standing out. Even when the child is performing dance on the stage, his, the child is communicating through eyes, through gestures, through body movements. And that is where every, every nuances of um, aesthetic literacy talks about communication. Right. So whether it is music, visual arts, how the child is expressing himself. You know, it is said that we express ourselves through art. A child who never speaks, maybe, but he communicates through art. You know, blind people, they communicate through different senses. Right. Uh, uh, as I told you also, Monet's example, that he was actually uh, not totally, but he was severely blind, but still his, his uh, paintings are highly appreciated and we still remember him. So everything that when we talk about aesthetics, it's also highlights the communication part of it, whether it is uh, verbal or whether it is through body language or whether it is through facial expressions or just the eyes eyes can rotate and, and showcase so much, right? We say eyes are actually uh, the window to your inner self. It is said that, that eyes are the window to the inner self. <clears throat> so eyes can express everything. So this is, I would say, aesthetic literacy is a very, very powerful tool. Going on to my next slide. Yeah, now you would say that if we have a curriculum based on aesthetic literacy and we integrate art into the regular subjects, now how do we assess them? It's very, very important that whatever we are bringing into the classroom needs to be assessed also. Whatever exposure is being given to the student, uh, the student should be assessed based on that. Assessment is basically to understand how much learning has happened and whatever learning objective, the teaching objective that I had kept in mind before I started my curriculum, has that objective been met? So assessments are basically just for that. So you can actually create rubrics related to art projects, whatever you are giving, uh, where you can actually uh, have different parameters, give them points as, I've, uh, as you can see, uh, I use this and I find it very useful, this particular rubric, where your, uh, you know, the criteria or the parameters are about the creativity, the use of elements and principles, that is whatever has been given to you, uh, understanding and, uh, sorry, craftsmanship, uh, how best you have bought out the craft or whatever you have. Uh, whether it is dance or whether it is music or whether instrumental playing, whatever it may be, how well you have done it. Understanding achievement and completion, how much you have understood, how much you were able to complete and achieve whatever objective or whatever was given, task was given to you. And how much effort and participate, participation was there from the student's end. So this is a lovely uh, rubric. And uh, every teacher can create, if, if the teacher feels that uh, they can add more criteria, they're welcome to. But this works out well. And uh, there is a documented, um, I would say, uh, a document, a documented uh, a rubric that I have where I can showcase that this is where my child 
uh, stands. This is where my students stand as of today and how, how uh, what kind of effort I need to take on to take them further. So this is, um, I thought I'll share it with you so that, you know, it becomes easier for everybody to understand. Uh, with that note, uh, if anybody has any question, I am ready. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, ma I uh, hope I am on time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we have some questions lined up here. Uh, if you permit, uh, I will read out those questions yeah, to you. Please. Yeah. Yeah. So the first question the audience wants to know, what made you take an interest in this topic? Oh, I'm uh, actually a very uh, creative person. I'm also a theater person and I had learned dance in my younger days. And I feel that um, the beauty of art has to be integrated into uh, the regular teaching and we need to bring in the appreciation part of it uh, in our regular uh, daily life. Because people are somewhere, you know, going too much into technology and we're forgetting the, the art, culture and traditions of our country and of the world. Yes, ma'am. So in your more than 30 years of experience in the field of education, what are some achievements that you are most proud about? Uh, I'm very proud of whatever I've achieved. I started as a, a teacher of grade one long time back. Uh, maybe it was 1985. And I was always, always doing something different. Uh, with my students, with the teachers, uh, which were um, with me. And I used to actually do, every day there used to be something new in the classroom. And children, I used to love the way children used to look at me when I entered the classroom. And they used to say, what is she going to do today? So that appreciation, that newness, the creativity uh, has helped me to what I am today. And uh, wherever I have worked, uh, I've got a lot of changes related to uh, creativity and art and culture and traditions, uh, which I really believe in. So these are my highlights. From a teacher, I became a, a headmistress. From headmistress, I became principal. And now I'm the CEO and uh, going on strong. Nice to know, ma'am. Yes, I agree. Curiosity leads to inventions is what the, you know, the big people say. So, and the students also will, when they have the curiosity, they're curious about uh, knowing things and uh, it leads to developing interest to learning, towards learning, which you have uh, done with your students. Nice to know. So what advice would you give for your young teachers starting in education for the first time, ma'am? Okay. So I would say that first of all, you need to understand the students' needs. Yeah, you need to know what the, your class of students require. And based on that, you have to move forward. Uh, whether you are a B.Ed. or M.Ed. or whatever qualification you have, then you go into the classroom, the, the practical experience that you will have will be very different. And that's where uh, you have to connect with the students, that's the first thing. Connecting with your students is the first thing. It's okay if one of my chapters is not done, that's fine. But I need to connect with my student. I need to understand each and every child in my class. What are their needs? What are their learning styles? And then based on that, I need to move forward. And if you do that, it's a cakewalk for you throughout. Right, ma'am. That is the difference between the human touch and the technology, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is this question is related to the to topic today. In a centrally directed exam focused syllabus, is there much scope for new education experiments like aesthetic literacy? It's not a new experiment at all. See, we, we have, every school has got art class, every school has got music class, every school has got dance class, right? That's not new. But how I integrate that with my curriculum is what is what we are looking at. Now, I'll give you a small example. Supposing in science, you're teaching about environment, right? So why can't we do environment with music? 
Why can't we do environment with art? Why can't we do environment with dance? Why can't we do environment with theater? So that is how bringing in the integration and uh, making the child understand the topic environment, just not by the bookish knowledge, but bringing in all these appreciations also. So it's not something new that we are creating, but then we have to be mindful of it because children today are very smart. They need different exposures, right? Just the bookish knowledge and just sitting in the classroom is not a, a you know cup of cake for them. So giving them exposure to different things and different ways of art and music and, and integrating it into the regular curriculum will definitely help. Yes, ma'am. I hope I've answered your question. Right, right. So the next question is, I think they are seeking your opinion, your take on this uh, statement. Do you think instead of a national curriculum, school education would have been more fulfilling for teachers and students if each school had the opportunity to decide their own curriculum for their students? Your take on that, ma'am. See, till uh, grade five, in fact, till grade six, uh, no board interferes into the education of the student in the school. So it is, you know, th those are the foundational years. We can experiment. Schools can experiment with whatever they want. Only at the higher level, maybe from grade eight, we start with the board uh, practices and all that because we want to prepare the students for board exam and so on and so forth. But at the primary level, when the child is ready to learn, the child is excited to learn, that's where we can experiment and do a lot of things with our students. That foundation, if we create a strong foundation for the child, then for teachers, you will see that later on, even, even in when the child comes to 9, 10, 11, that curiosity and that excitement of studies will always be there. So that is my take on it. Right. So coming to the experiential learning, right? So are IB schools better than CBC schools? No, no. I will never say that. I will never say that. Only thing is, CBSE schools are now changing a lot because, uh, you know, CBSE has come up with uh, a lot of new changes and all that, which are really, really good. Um, it depends upon the school, whether it is IB school or CBSE school, how they want to reinvent uh, how the, the teaching strategies into their uh, school. That is important. So it's not about IB or CBSC or whatever. A CBSC school also can follow and do beautiful things uh, with the students, uh, which have never been thought of by anybody. So creativity and innovation can happen anywhere. It's not just IB schools. IB schools basically because they follow the philosophy uh, of. Uh, you know, bringing in the in nature into the classroom because it started in Italy when during the war time when parents started teaching their own students because everything else was destroyed. So whatever was available, you know, they brought in those and started teaching. So that's the philosophy of IB. But CBSC also a school which believes in doing something different, in bringing in something different will always be highlighted and can do wonders. Right, ma'am. So uh, you showed your last slide uh, regarding the assessment. This question is related to that. So how does one really know when the aesthetic education is being fostered? Hmm. So this is where, you know, um, I always tell the teachers uh, where uh, a small diary with your uh, tag, you know, the lanyard that you wear. Every teacher has got that. And whenever the children are doing their artwork or whenever you're observing them in music class or whatever you have given, you should quickly make the notes at how the child is doing it. Because, you know, uh, that gives an authentic, authentic information about how the child is performing. And the rubrics are basically... Uh, when you talk about creativity, use of elements and craft, you can observe and that is where you can actually individually, you can change the child and help them align to what you want later on. Right? Yeah. So that ends the question answer uh, session, ma'am.
if you can uh, switch uh, uh, on your camera and uh, switch off your uh, you know uh, stop sharing your screen stop sharing. Okay. yeah yes school journal of education and school reformer.com thank you for the talk and for patiently answering all the questions ma'am we also thank the audience for participating in the event uh, before ending the session do you want to say something anything else ma'am no i would say that you know uh, always lead the students towards the culture and the art and 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 let them appreciate the good things uh, that are surrounding them because it will create a positive vibe in the classroom as well as in the whole environment and the child will become confident too so this is what we look at child being very confident about uh, what he is doing and what he wants to do so give them that kind of exposure and and be creative thanks a lot ma'am we will end the session with this with the, uh, the statement of yours and have a great day it was a very good session thank you thank you thank you so much